Okay, today we'll go on talking about the causes of the Second World War. For the last few classes, we focus on three things, right? We firstly talk about the new nation states formed after the First World War, and then we talk about the declining influence of Europe, and we learn to explain the declining influence, and then we talk about the rising status of U.S. and Japan. So today we're going to talk some other factors which lead to the causes of the Second World War. And for the following classes, we, we actually focus on these three topics. Under the cause of the Second World War, we have the legacy of the, uh, of the First World War. Legacy is a little different from what we talk, uh, for example, about the arrangement of the First World War, because legacy is more of a long-term impact, while the arrangements were more of a short-term impacts. And then, under the legacy of the First World War, we're going to focus on the discontent of two countries. The reason that we are using Germany and Italy as great examples is because these two countries play a very important role in leading to the Second World War. And then after this, we're going to talk about the Great Depression. Because uh, for the last few class, we learned about the rising status of US, right? So we're going to talk about, at that time, since US, they were the largest market for the world industry, and also they are the largest creditor in the world, right? So why they have to uh, go through a Great Depression in such a booming economy, such a like rising country? Last but not the least, we're going to talk about the rise of totalitarianism. We're going to uh, study what is totalitarianism, and then we're going to learn some examples, for example, Nazism, fascism, militarism, and then we're going to talk about under this totalitarianism like policy, aggressions of Japan, Italy, and Germany. And on the other hand, while the, these countries, they were aggressively expanded to different countries, what were the response from Britain, France, US, and USSR? Okay, so today we're going to focus on one thing, that is the legacy of the First World War, the discontent of Germany and the discontent of Italy. Actually, to understand the discontent of Germany is not so difficult if, have, if you have deep understanding on Paris Peace Conference and the Treaty of Versailles, and you all know how unfairly and humiliated that the Germany has suffered in the Paris Peace Conference, and they were forced to sign the Treaty of Versailles, right? So what were the reaction for the people when they heard that their country they were humiliated in the First World War? Here we have two sources. Source A, two headlines in Germany newspaper in 1919. And then source B, German protest against the Treaty of Versailles. So let's check the question first. Identify the discontent of German people after the First World War. As reflected in source A and B, what impact do you think such discontent will make on Germany? So to answer these questions, we need to answer two parts. Firstly, we need to identify the content, this content, and then we need to tell the what were the impacts or when there's a discontent of the people, what impact they would make on Germany, like what Germany, their reaction on uh, these discontent emotions, right? So firstly, let's focus on source A and B. For the for source A, I'd rather die in battle than accept the Treaty of Versailles, says the German commander in chief. Right? That means they think the Treaty of Versailles like, is very humiliated, that they'd rather die in a battle than to live a life and to see like how their country were bullied by others. Next headline Revenge Germany do not forget humiliation of the Treaty of Versailles. So on one hand, talk about the humiliation in the Treaty of Versailles, and on the other hand, from this headline, actually, it already directs you with the impact of their humiliation feeling, right? Is to revenge. Let's see source B, protest against the Treaty of Versailles. So you can see from here that people, they are protesting for the treaty, that their country has signed the treaty, right? So. From these two sources, actually, what kind of attitude or emotion you can feel? 
from these two sources. First, they feel uh, like treated unequally, right? And then secondly, they feel humiliated by the treaty and feel humiliated by how people treat them in Paris, right? And with all these discontent feeling, their reaction is to protest and even worse is to revenge. So actually, when we talk about revenge here, you can remind yourself a little about the extreme nationalism that we learned to try to explain the First World War, right? So this is a time also when people, they become a little, I won't say very extreme, but this is a time also people, when they have some like revengeful feeling, like at old times, like the French people, they want to take revenge to get back Elsa's the ring, right? This is the reason why people say that the, the history repeats itself. So for the first question, identify this kind of German people. Of course, they feel humiliated. They feel uh, un, uh, treated like unequally, unfair, right? And also their reaction is to, they would try, they this, firstly they protest and then they want to try to revenge and maybe lead to another war. They thought the Treaty of Versailles was humiliating and they didn't want to accept it. Germany would try to break the treaty in order to change the status quo. Status quo means the situation they were having now and they would ask for revenge and even lead to another war. So second question, what economic problems? So as we all know, according to Treaty of Versailles, they have to pay huge reparations, right? It's, a, it's around 6.6 .6 billion pounds. So what, of course, they will have some economic problems that they face after the First World War as reflected in source C and D. Cite relevant clues from the sources to support your answer. So firstly, let's check source C and D. So firstly, source C is, um, is a cartoon. Every time we have a cartoon, I remind you that firstly, read the title, right? Here, perhaps it would G up better if we let it touch earth. What does it mean by G up? That means to let the carriage to move, right? If you, because the function of a carriage is to move things from one place to another. So from this source, you can see clearly that the load of the carriage is too heavy, so the horse can't even touch the earth. Of course, it can't really like move to anywhere, right? So this is the title of it. And then from the cartoon, I, I tell you that you can check from the left side to the right side. So left side, firstly, words, unlimited indemnity and then the carriage, and then the horse, the horse with the name Germany on it. And then there are two, I think they are the owners of the horse that who is trying to like move the carriage, right? So in this cartoon, can it reflect any, can it reflect any economic development? I think no, why? Because the carriage can't even move. And the reason why it can't move is because the unlimited indemnity. Actually, indemnity is just another word that says reparation. That means because of this reparation, which is too heavy for Germany, that they can't even move forward one step, right? So the first problem will be clear here is that is, it is Germany, they could not afford the huge indemnity. Clues are, the loads of carriage, which name tag as unlimited indemnity. And it was so heavy that the horse, which represented Germany, you can see Germany sign on the neck of the horse, could not even touch the ground, let alone move, right? So let's check next source, source D, exchange rate of German mark to British pound. Remember, when we talk about the reparation, it was 6.6 .6 billion, pounds but not marks right that means they have to pay in british pounds instead so the exchange rate of german marks to british pounds can be important because like the if german mark really valuable actually they didn't really need to pay a lot of german marks right but you can see on the contrary actually the trend is german mark was greatly devalued in 1914 it was 20 German marks changed to 1 British pound, but in 1923, it is 16 trillion German marks to only 1 British pound. And in 1923, that you can see actually German mark at that point is worthless. 
right? So one thing happened in Germany. That is the when the money is not really worth anything. It's not has no value, right? The German mark was greatly devalued, and the exchange rate of German mark to British pound continued to drop sharply from 1914 to. 1923. That means from the start of the First World War to the end of the First World War. Here, actually, I'm going to explain one important terms when we try to explain this period of time. That is the hyperinflation. So we should we already know what this inflation is, right? It is the money. It is a time when money losses its value. So you need to pay more for the same thing. While hyperinflation is a like very extreme degree of inflation. For example, to cost a loaf of bread in Germany, you use one mark to buy a loaf of bread right after the First World War. But in 1923, you have to use that is that 200 billion marks to only buy a loaf of bread, right? So what happened in Germany? So now I need to explain you about like a one term in like economy is the relationship or the relevancy between the value of the money money and the product in the market. So here I'm going to explain to you at that time where there is hyperinflation in Germany. So. For example, at that time we have a country named SSC, and in this country there is one market. Market is the place when people they like trade with each other, or selling things or buying things with each other. It's easy to understand, right? And also there is one bank. Bank at here the function is to print money. So actually. When bank they print money, and this money goes to people. For example, by salary or by other like methods, goes to people, and people they went to market to spend those money, right? So now, in SSC as a country in this market, there were there are ten apples. Apples as a fruit, not the electronic device. Okay, ten apples in this market, and then bank today or at this time they print out ten dollars. So these ten dollars will will like go to different places to the people, and these people they go to the market to spend these ten dollars. But Since in the market, because this is a like very ideal situation, because in the market that only these ten apples, that is reason why actually they will buy like for each apple, it will cost them one dollar, one dollar ideally, right? But now, bank today it prints out a thousand dollars. So compares to ten dollars, a huge amount of money, right? And these ten dollars will like use different ways to go to people, and then these people will spend these thousand dollar on the market for these same ten apples. So each of the apple now will be worth a hundred dollar, right? So the pa- The reason why the apple rise from ten dollar to a hundred dollars is because they were the only products in the market, and for the bank they print more money, right? So you can see actually the value of this money was decided by the products in market, right? So at that time, what happened in Germany is is after the First World War, and then not only after the First World War, they are the losing country. They have to pay huge reparation, then and they have to reconstruct their their country. Right? That means in the market of Germany, they don't have a lot of product. Products, right? Because、uh, last few class I mentioned after the First World War, there's a economic problem is the shortage of resources. So since 
they don't have a lot of product in the market, of course, the price of these products will grow up a lot, right? The reason why a little hyperinflation is because not only because they don't have a lot of resources in the market, but at the same time, the German government, they keep on printing money. That means there will be more and more money goes to people and people use this money to spend to the market, right? But in the market, they only have a very limited amount of products. That is the reason why it finally leads to the hyperinflation. And the reason why the government tried to print more money is because they have to pay the reparation and they have to reconstruct their country. But I think it's because the president of Germany at that time, he didn't really know a lot about the principle of the economy. This is the reason why actually it only lead to a worse, like it only lead to a worse economic condition. That is the hyperinflation at that time. So what people's life at that time, how would the above problems affect people's life? You can see in the first picture, the two children and they're playing with the money, the money notes, right? Because money, they're only papers. If you try to see the value of it, if it is in value, they're just piece of papers, right? So it, when it's worthless, maybe they don't have money to buy any toys for them. So they all can only play with those money. And you can see the money notes on the floor, but no one tries to pick it up because it's, they're worthless, right? How about the last picture here? What is the housewife doing? Actually, she was cooking, but by using and burning this money. Actually, because at that time, the coal mine becomes so limited, they can't really use the money to buy them. That is the reason why they, like, instead of using those coal, they just use, like, the money notes for cooking food. That is very exaggerated, right? Can't imagine that. So you can see, live actually, even though you can make fun of this, but you have to admit that at, this, at that time, people, they will live in a very difficult life. And this will just con be this content, they will be not satisfied with their situation, right? And you can see in this picture, there are only one room, but there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are eight members in this family. And these people, they have to squeeze in a small room. So. You can also, also you can see decoration. It's obvious that these people, they are very poor, right? So you also need to be able to explain why German people, they are so discontent with the whole situation, okay? Of course, these things, right? The terms of treaty oversight, they are very harsh and unequal, have to pay huge reparation. They have to give up many territories, which means also resources right materials labor force right and also germany was disarmed and also they have to bear all the war responsibility right so this make them this content but also here you have to see to like it's also because of the decision made by the government who make who like it's a is a self-made situation which high, which called hyperinflation while they keep printing all those money, right? So next, this content of Italy. But for this part, I would like to keep as an exercise for you because it's almost the same kind of economic problems, which ha you can see the exchange rate of US dollar, Italian uh, Lira. So actually same kind of things is happening, which called you're going to fill in banks yourself, okay? So I will, I will give you time to finish these two questions. Firstly, what does Source tell you about the view of Italy on the Paris Peace Settlement? That means you need to understand and to be able to explain why at that time, even though they're the winning power, still they, are, they have this content in their country. And then you're going to finish the second part, which is you need, to answer, you need to identify the problem. Actually, I think it's so easy for you to identify that problem, right? And also, you need to use clues to explain it. 
Okay, so I think just finish this exercise and we're going, we're going to meet each other at the YouTube live. Okay, see you next time.